Jinx Monsoon, and welcome to a brand new episode of I'm 40% Podcast. With me, as always, is my subordinate, good friend, and biological son, even though he's the same age as me, it's Nick Sahoya. Hi, you little stinker. How you doing? Hi. You're looking like an 80s metal band today. Thank What's you. What's that all about? What I is this, did my hair the same Guns way I usually do it. It's been like Slasher. this for a while. More like a T Rex seventies Ramon. You remember yeah. the Ramones? They kind of shifted a little. Yeah, them old Ramones. I remember those Ramones. Oh. Uh, led by their frontman Ray Ramon. <laughs> okay, it's really. I have to say, I'm really bad that you said something that funny at the beginning of the podcast because now I have to pretend not to like it. <laughs> it was funny. Um, it was pretty good. <laughs> um, our ah, special beat on the brat. Ah, <laughs> I literally can't think of a Ramon song now. Um, Dad, I want to be sedated. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I want to be sedated, ma. Uh, well, thanks for breaking in. I haven't even introduced you yet, but our special guest today is. Major Scales, my music partner, um, common law husband, and former roommate, believe it or not. You go, girl! Oh, it's... Ooh. It's so believable, (laughs) I think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Major, how are you doing? You know, I am hanging in. It is... You'll notice... I've got the summer wear on today. It just <laughs> it just hit above sixty in Seattle, so I'm I'm going all in on the on beachy. the summer. <laughs> it's beachy, um, just the slightest bit of sun, and I'm ready for it. Here we are in three different locations where once we all lived in Seattle within oh. walking distance of each other. Mm-hmm. Now we're all over the the West Coast. That's and not I was very kind interesting. Of your, um... I was kind but of your roommate fact. for a second there, Richard. Remember when I was moderately homeless? Yes, yes. It was it was only moderate. And um, <laughs> I, the, the nice thing is I have a horrible memory, so I don't remember that time very well. But that means that nothing horrible happened during that time. So I will say I was a good. very courteous couch surfer. I smelled mm-hmm. bad and I really needed to make myself at home. But once it was time for me to leave, I I'd left no trace. You were out. The smell mm-hmm. was gone with you. It was great. <laughs> How um, I, I'm trying to estimate how many times, probably major, that you woke up and and there was just Nick sleeping on the couch after a night of frivolity. <laughs> pretty pretty often, if I woke up to use the restroom or something, I would see a head or a pair of feet like kicked off the side <laughs> of the couch in silhouette, and be like, "Oh, it, there was a thing." <laughs> and it was an odd couch to sleep on. That orange couch. Oh yeah, it was not very like, comfortable. It was, it was kidney um, shaped. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was cute, uh, but not practical at all. Which I think says a lot about all of us. We left that couch in San Francisco, much like my heart. <laughs> I, oh, we, glad you said it, it. it. It was a tragedy to leave that couch behind. It um, was pretty gross. <laughs> It lived in the garage for two years. It, was, it had its it was day, time for I it to think. Go. <laughs> but but getting that couch was a wonderful day because we, I think it was at Value Village. It must have been Value Goodwill. Village. That's where all the good I can't stuff remember. was. And, um, That's where you got uh, that elephant coffee. Why are we just talking about your old apartment? For doesn't this matter. Long? People it doesn't matter. Stuff. But <laughs> we had to. We we didn't have any cars at our disposal, and so we carried that couch probably like 15 blocks and we had to keep stopping and taking breaks and we would stop and all pose on the couch and take pictures um, in the <laughs> middle of the street sitting on the couch. It was it was a good day. 
Ah, uh, simpler times. Simpler, <laughs> simpler times. <laughs> when when the biggest drama we had in a day was getting a couch to the apartment. <laughs> um, and now here we are in our 30s. Um, not looking too worse for the wear, though, I must say. You both we're look exactly the same. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I think I think physically we're we're all doing really well. It's more of the emotional toll. The couch, the carrying the couch is in our head now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. We're all, we all have to carry a couch. All <laughs> yeah, every day we wake up and we carry a couch. couch. We carry that couch, man. <laughs> You've got it's to become carry a metaphor. That couch, yeah. That. <laughs> well, as interesting as this is, we are here to talk about. <laughs> Futurama, um, one of my favorite episodes um, because it's a mom-heavy episode. Mm. Nick, why don't you take us away? Major, major, mm. what's yes. your relationship with Futurama? You know, I was thinking about I just about have this. to do my job because the producer, quote unquote, not doing her job. What is your relationship with Futurama? Do you like it? Have you seen it? Uh, I, I do like it. I have seen it. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, it wasn't as quite as formative for me as I think The Simpsons was. I think mm. coming off of the end of The Simpsons, you know, I, I left that around college. And that was about when the humor was kind of not getting to me like it was when I grew up with it. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe maybe that or maybe just the lack of time sort of left a, a sour taste in my mouth. I didn't pick up Futurama right away. Um, but I did start returning to it later on. I remember later in my college years and then definitely now that you can get it streaming online, I've definitely just bored through it a few times now. At least you've done your research. You've caught up. (laughs) It's never had quite the same, you know, I'm not going to see an episode of Futurama and think, oh, my childhood, but I guess that's just the way of the world. Well, you're also older than the two of us, so... Okay. I'm glad you were able to fit that in. It's true. <laughs> I will say I I'm the youngest you one here. I love you about yeah, <laughs> by like two, years. two months. You're, yeah, I love teasing um, Major about being two years older than me as if he's like, you know, two decades older than me. But Nick, you're like two months younger than me. So I don't get what this, what this like devil may care attitude. <laughs> it's just well, my youth. It's a maturity thing, really. Um, is there a cold open? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're doing it. Okay, we're doing it now. I'm sorry you threw you threw me off because you didn't do your job. There's I no really want to op- talk about there, there's this no episode. Cold open. We need the time to talk about this episode because it really the, is. It's prime prime Futurama. We're, we're yeah. entering in here. And if anyone wants to hear more backstory between Major and myself, um, Major has an episode of Hijinks where you can learn all about our relationship. That's why I uh, didn't spend as much time talking him up in this here podcast because that's already that already exists somewhere else. So let's that just ground. focus on the future. Um, but do you remember um, when you got the elephant coffee table and we were so excited, <laughs> but then we kept banging our shins on it? Oh like, my God. The elephant uh, trunk years, stuck out. They stuck out. It was an ankle <laughs> calf stuck. killer. It really it was. was. <laughs> there's um, no cold open. <laughs> there's no uh, we cold open. What's the we chiron? Have a chiron. <laughs> we have a chiron. <laughs> it says larva tested, pupa approved. I think this is eh. a very funny Chiron. No, I think it's good. My issue why it's not getting the what? full five stars mm. is because it's making fun of kid tested mother approved. And, and I don't think pupa. Oh, wait, is right? larva bigger than pupa? No, a I... larva is the first stage. Larva tested pupa approved. I see I thought it was the opposite. So I thought, well, that kid, doesn't make sense. Kid tested mother approved, which I don't even know what that was for. Except but for... I don't know that a pupa the pupa is not equivalent to a mother because right, a pupa like is brother. still in its like adolescent stage yeah <laughs> anyway four out of five chirons that's my rating i give it a um, two out of five you are chirons. so mean with the chiron ratings what it was you a stretch care. you write like... a fucking chiron that's hilarious and timely you do it i'm sorry i'm yelling at i'm yelling at mom not you major i'll write um, a chiron for this episode um uh more evidence to why Nick's a stupid Boo. piece of shit. <laughs> Boo. Zero Chirons <laughs> out of a possible five Chirons. 
we do a good Morbo bit. Um, he's Love talking about. I'm forty percent podcast. The podcast you can smell. Bathe, Nick. <laughs> I showered yesterday. Um, the uh, humans have easily injured knees. Major, you were responding to this. Tell me your thoughts on Morbo. I will never not enjoy the um, the um, stifled laughter that Morbo gets after every morbid <laughs> comment he gives. <laughs> every every time he says something horrible, and the the female newscaster has a name. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't think she does. <laughs> really. Every time she it. always just chuckles it off. It, it makes me think of. It makes me think of, um, you know, like uh, the Regis and Kathy Lee trope of like <laughs> Regis saying some ridiculous old person thing and Kathy Lee being like, "Oh, Regis, no one knows what you're talking about." Um, I think that's what they were playing with here, but they took it to an absurd level because you know Morbo's the news monster. The news anchors. Kind of steal the show this episode. This is some of the best. Yeah, some of their best stuff is in this episode. Um, The human news anchor, which is what I wrote down because I don't think she has a name. (laughs) um, She announces that it's Mother's Day. It's a day for robots to celebrate mom, the creator of the robots and the head of mom's friendly robot corporation. Now that all that is all fine with me, well and good that they've got a different Mother's Day. But I w- wish there was just a line saying, "What happened to the old Mother's Day? Did we get rid of that? Oh. Are there two holidays? Did we combine them?" It's not explained. I I feel like there was a hostile yes. takeover, you know, mm. and I oh. think robots outnumber humans in the future. I think they do. Um, based on the election episode, um, I also and also think based that... on lamps being sentient in this episode. Yeah, lamps and coffee makers. <laughs> yeah. And when you think of how much um, capital that mom monopolizes, it, 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 it's not a momopolizes. I get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think there it's safe to say that you know mom probably just took over Mother's Day and there's so many things that um w- you know Fry remembers from our time that no one's ever even heard of and so it, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if like no one even remembers that Mother's Day used to be a human holiday. It's possible. Um, it was a commercial, you know, racket anyway who needed it. You know Happy what's Love weird, Day, though? everybody! <laughs> <laughs> Let's name it something like Love Day, but not so stupid. <laughs> Happy Love Day! <laughs> um, uh, did you know that in the UK, they don't call it Mother's Day, they call it Mothering Day? Mothering Day, Day which I sounds sick. It, it sounds, sounds wrong. <laughs> it sounds like something someone suckling on something (laughs) no i don't like it the way you work (laughs) suckling into almost every conversation major i'll never understand it's Um, a gift i'm just glad you didn't do the sound effect uh (laughs) i wish i had a suckling sound effect on here but i don't that um that sheep uh suckling from the bottle from simpsons would have been nice (laughs) (laughs) um so Bender comes home and he's got a basket full of gifts that he's bought for mom. Um, one of them is a talking greeting card and its little poem is so disgusting. It makes everyone nauseous. I love you, mom, and I guess you're to blame for the joy that I feel from hearing your name. You're as tender as corned beef and as warm as salami. Pastrami. <laughs> oh, pastrami? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah pastrami's warm, I guess. <laughs> I love my mommy. <laughs> the, the looks... I know I'm just paraphrasing. So <laughs> no, I think all that the was super fans. That's pretty good. The... Da, 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 da. <laughs> I didn't write it down because it does make me physically ill. The looks mm. of of horror on their faces yeah. <laughs> as he's reading it to them is is really good. They're just disgusted by it. <laughs> I so... love my mommy. <laughs> so they've got all this stuff. And Leela says, how are you going to get all that stuff to mom? And Bender says, I'll get a couple chumps to help me. And then it (laughs) hard cuts to them carrying all of the presents for him. And he says, you call yourself chumps? Pick up the pace. (laughs) (laughs) And we see that at mom's friendly robot factory, 
all the robots are just there delivering their presents to mom. I love that there's just an acceptance cr- conveyor belt. This is yes. a very <laughs> impersonal holiday. Um, but the pro- the robots, you know, they're all programmed to just have unquestioned unconditional love for mom so no one looks too too deep into it but we get a we get a sad um but endearing a tinny tim moment oh my god this tinny tim moment was amazing because <laughs> he don't have much is, money yeah yeah you no actually major if i was gonna cast tinny tim i would cast you so why don't you take this one <laughs> I don't have much money, but I managed to put this together. It was like a little mom doll or a yeah, ceramic it was like a figurine. Mom. Or... Yeah. Yeah. So, which is funny because it's like, I wonder if it's the mom's friendly robot factory producing this mommerabilia and then the <laughs> robots buy it and then give it back to her. I don't know. <laughs> Who's it's making these confusing. little mom figurines? Jinx, do you wish that um, for for um, fans you had a conveyor belt like this for gifts that you got from them with just a picture of you? Thank you. Uh, you know, that would remove all the, the sentiment from receiving a fan gift, you know. And I like I, I enjoy seeing their faces when I when I open up um, <laughs> the rocks that they give me. <laughs> <laughs> of At course, DragCon I'm... next year, you should have the the mirror that mom has, where it's like <laughs> a cardboard cutout of mom with a Every mirror attached. Every fan is my most favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that That is a good idea. The conveyor belt's not a good idea, but the mirror... <laughs> Is a good idea, and when I said that um, my fans give me rocks, it's because I love crystals and I cor- collect crystals. But it's funnier to say that everyone's just giving me rocks. Um, but mm-hmm. it, it, it's true; it's my favorite fan gift is crystals or crystal jewelry. So, putting that out into the universe once more. Um, Strength Tinny in Tim. my altar. <laughs> Tinny Tim gets crushed by the Crushinator. Um, well, first, Tinny Tim's first little figurine gifts, get, yeah. <laughs> gets oh. crushed by Bender's many, many stolen gifts. And then Tinny Tim himself gets crushed by the Crushinator. Oh. <laughs> Seemingly beyond repair, but then we see him in future episodes. Oh, so I fine. guess robots can just be smashed, and even if well, they're impoverished, we'll learn they'll later be why reconstructed. robots can just come back whenever they want. Oh, that's true. Cylons. So they go to the Robot History Museum. There's wax replicas, and we have a great bit here where Leela looks at, or no, Fry looks at a wax robot and says, "Oh wow, who's this guy?" And it's a, this a is janitor. One of my favorite jokes. <laughs> so good. I'm the janitor. What's wrong with you? Oh, sorry. I thought you were made out of wax. I am I made, am out, made of out, of out of wax. <laughs> is there something wrong with a robot made out of wax taking a standing, standing break? Nap. In, <laughs> standing nap in a wax robot museum or does that confuse you <laughs> and i love that fry just kind of backs up slowly so <laughs> indignant so about aggro. it yeah well you have to imagine that maybe this isn't the first ignorant human that's given this wax robot guff for Wait, are, taking are a really standing blaming nap fry for this it seems well, I mean, I, I just don't understand what the point of a wax robot is. Like a working <laughs> wax robot seems very impractical, especially but for janitorial work. The, yeah, what if he gets heated up? He might robots melt. in this episode really doesn't make any sense. No. Like oh, all like of these when the things bus... just sprout legs when they need to. <laughs> when the bus pulls up full of robots, and after all the robots get out, it just sprouts legs and walks inside. No, that inside makes perfect also. sense to me. That <laughs> makes sense. But like, well, yeah, because we have happened. self-driving cars now. So <laughs> you know, in the future. Thanks, Elon. <laughs> That piece of shit. <laughs> that piece. Garbage. You're human garbage. <laughs> okay, this is another good thing for our Futurama spec script, That's Jinx. Is we can, I know, but we can write an episode where there's, there's a future guy and his name is Elon Musk. Wait, did I, cha- did I change Rick the last Morty name? did Rick and Morty already do the Elon Tusk? <laughs> yeah, oh. but they actually had Elon on and that was the beginning of the end of Rick and Morty for me. Um... um and they have portray to say, him as a cool guy. Hmm. And I, I think to... this is why the fan base is so toxic, is because they are 
aggrandizing Elon Musk, even though he's obviously a Bond villain. (laughs) I have to say, complete departure from the episode, but I watched Chippendale Rescue Rangers, the movie, with Michael last night. (laughs) It's good. It's good. Michael Michael said, is this a celebration of cartoons and voice actors, or is it just... Disney sno- stroking their giant massive t- <laughs> <laughs> is it a little is bit it of both. A little both? It's, a, it's a I mean two both. things can be true. True, yeah. But um uh you know it is a celebration of voice actors because every cartoon imaginable is in it. But they Trans make McNeil's like in it. Yeah. Yes, she is. Um, but they make like three different Rick and Morty references for some reason, because I don't know that Disney owns Rick and Morty, but they have a couple cartoon references of cartoons that they don't own. Yeah, South Park's um, in there. Did you see yeah, the Mr. Doubtfire? So random. They stole yes, the I joke. saw the Mr. Doubtfire. Yes. So they stole for the people joke. who saw Major and Jinx's Even though they probably tour. began working on this No, film. they stole it. They went no, into our Google Doc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, hesitant about that movie, but uh, everyone's saying such great things. So maybe I it have to very give, funny. It, give it a try. I liked it. I liked it. Except the logic in the movie, like... P- oh God, I can't spoil anything. But Don't spoil. anyway, <laughs> um, mom, <laughs> it cuts from the mirror saying, "I love all my robots, most of all," and yes. then it cuts to her in real life saying, "Jerk, ro- jerkwad robots make me sick to my ass." Perfect. And she does her trademark transformation from like matronly to like little spindly, like Isma villain. But this time, her like dress instead of just being a shell. Like when you did it, Jinx. Yeah. She it like turns into a helicopter and goes inside of her boots. <laughs> it like reverts into her boobs and her boots somehow. Yeah. It's very impressive. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I I would love if they kept this bit going and every time she takes off the the, the mom suit, it's some different <laughs> it's some weird other weird transition. Thing, yeah. Maybe but, it could um, be like just Black Panther suit away. and just be like nanobots. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> if it airlifts off her head. What if it's like mm-hmm, yeah. Venom? <laughs> it's like a symbiote. It's a symbiote. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah. just crawls off of her. It, it's a sludge that slinks away. And then it gets um, on Peter Parker and he becomes a mom, mom Spider Man. <laughs> um, no. No. And then, you know, uh, mom's sons inquire as to why she hates Mother's Day so much. We also skipped over the joke that the fact that, like, all the gifts that the robots bring her just get um, um, broken down for parts and and redistributed as other products. What what do they get turned into? She keeps the cash. She keeps the cash. cash. The paper. She says it's turned into a fake cancer medication and she's happy that she's giving people false hope <laughs> yes and, and the, the so letters bleak. get turned into orphan grade um toilet paper That's right. oh, okay she really is quite diabolical this <laughs> mom why does she want the gifts at all like why wouldn't she say just cash because it's not like she's because she she's got a public image, pieces? she's got a public yeah. image to uphold, mm-hmm. and okay. even if the robots are programmed to love her no matter what, you know, like it's funny that she, it seems like she still cares about like what humans think of her because mm. she's got this whole public persona. But you know, throughout the throughout the seasons, we see many examples of mom letting her true self show, but no one seems to care. No, they still well, think of just her as just like the Elon most Musk. lovable, <laughs> um, the most lovable tycoon. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true to life, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, mom reveals that she can control all of the robots with this little remote control, and she wants to do an uprising. And she gives a speech from a balcony, and it's a very fascist-looking speech because <laughs> she's got like banners. That same mom. What I want to know is why this Mother's Day? She was mm. just, you know, it was, she was pent up. She was going to do it eventually. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she woke up I on the wrong side of the bed that day. I what was special about this Mother's Day that she finally decided to go through with this plan that it seems like she's had for a while, but... 70th anniversary of getting dumped <laughs> by Yeah, that's the all professor. it would take is like a little... You know, it's it. Today is the day, or I finally put in the last 
antenna or some some <laughs> yeah. BS. Yeah. Is this is this the first time? So when her sons ask her why she hates Mother's Day, and she explains that she was dumped by um, Hubert J. Hubert J. Farnsworth. Oh my God, Hubert <laughs> J. Farnsworth. Oh, the fans AKA are right the in right professor. now. <laughs> um, uh, she reveals he dumped her because of their difference in opinion in how to market his cutie McWhiskers I love <laughs> laser cutie beam McWhiskers. toy. QT um, McWhiskers. QT. <laughs> Quentin um, Tarantino is this the McWhiskers. First time, <laughs> is this the first time that we learned that um, the professor and mom used to be lovers? I guess I think so. so. Yeah. I think so. And this is also the first time we learned that he worked for mom's company, or did we already know that because we knew he made some of the robots? I feel like we already knew part of it. I, f- I feel like we may have known part of it, but whatever. This is this is the episode where we see just how deep their relationship goes. And they seem mom to be the two speech. oldest people on the planet. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it makes sense that they you know have a long storied past between the two of them. Um, mom, uh, at her balcony speech, she says, just once before I die, I'd like to be supreme overlord of Earth. You know, a humble request. And she hits the button, and all the robots begin to re- rebel. And my favorite, the annoying uh, schmaltzy greeting card becomes a sort of Marxist uh, <laughs> revolutionary mouthpiece <laughs> and uh, whips up Bender to fight against the bourgeoisie. What does mom say to the robots when she says, now, now go conquer Earth, you bastards. And yeah, she pushes the button like and they go, um, go conquer Earth, us bastards. It's just <laughs> those little touches, you know. <laughs> the, um, the greeting card's great. I, I mean, everything that goes wrong in the, the future, or in the office, the Planet Express office. Um, I love, I love the coffee machine specifically. <laughs> Can yes. I have some coffee? <laughs> Out of oh, no. Can I have some Would cream you like with some my coffee? Milk? Out yeah. of cream. <laughs> <laughs> Out of coffee. <laughs> Did you catch that? Fry takes eight spoons of sugar with his coffee. <laughs> yeah, he, yes. you know, that's that's fry, fry, fry. M- must be Starbucks <laughs> coffee. Am I right? Oh, can't drink that without eight spoons of coffee. Oof. <laughs> oh. I- <laughs> Spoons of coffee. What are, you, <laughs> what are you drinking, Mom? Cold brew that's really bitter and harsh. See, that's the cold kinda... brew, I feel like some of the cold brews, they like try to out bitter each other. And it's like, just give me a smooth, <laughs> a smooth, refreshing can drink. I, can I just drink this, please? Yeah, I don't want to put sugar in it, but you're asking me to with your <laughs> actions. They have, you know, they have sweetened and flavored cold brews too, but I, I kind of am addicted to That defeats to the, the purpose because to the, then you're, to the you're torture just... of drinking it. <laughs> At least when you're feeling the torture, you're like, oh, it's working. <sighs> the whole point of cold brew is so that you can get a lot of caffeine without drinking like a Red Bull or like a soda. And then if you mm-hmm. put sugar in it, then you're getting I guess digestive troubles and <laughs> and the sugar. So it's like, what's the point? The There's sugar. no trade off here. <laughs> so... Um, they, the robots um, are rebelling. They're watching the TV. <laughs> they love the toaster. The to- they love the toaster coming to life. This is the third or fourth toaster coming to life joke. And not the last, mind you. It's funny. And it's funny that it sounds like a dog and it's and it's eating this piece of toast. Uh, I love the, um, uh, the good old garbage disposal is still on your side. <laughs> Why oh, would it have a voice? <laughs> Someone <laughs> dropped a shiny diamond down here. And Amy goes to stick her hand in it and it goes like... <laughs> 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 the diabolical laughing from that and uh, Lisa's little... Or Lisa, yeah, that's, that's Lila's, a trust me- like uh, Pip-Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the, um, Tress McNeil does both boy. of those um, voices. She's the garbage garbage disposal, and it's one of my favorite Tress McNeil um, signatures. Is her <laughs> laugh, <laughs> and then yes, um, the wrist low Jack Lamater is also Tress McNeil, and she gets a burn in on Leela and says, <laughs> "Why don't you try washing under me sometime?" <laughs> um. 
there's a moment where the robots are protesting in the streets and they say, hey, hey, ho, ho. <laughs> One one zero zero one one zero. Hey hey. <laughs> the binary jokes are endless. This is the best one though. This is the funniest Futurama. binary joke. I feel like I, think. I feel like also. I mean, what is that in binary? I feel like the um the creators oh, it of this surely show means nothing. Are well, I don't know. I feel like the the creators of this show are mathematically knowledge enough that they probably put something in there. It's probably just Matt Groening's initials or something. <laughs> yeah, it's probably that. I don't think it could be more than a couple letters because of yeah. the way binary works. Isn't True. like one letter like three numbers sometimes? Oh. You're asking a theater student. <laughs> Two um, theater students. Oh. <laughs> so you didn't get that the robots outside of mom's uh, place had their signs written in C++? You didn't mm-hmm. understand that? <laughs> I didn't understand it, but I was like, oh, a computer thing. Oh, I think it was C++. Things. That's one of them computer things. Ah. I tried to take a computer programming class in college. It was like my first or second semester because my friend was in it. And it was the only time I ever did a hard withdrawal from a class. I was just like, this is fucking impossible. I will never be good at this. And I don't hard, care to learn. Hard quit. I thought Force I was quit. so cool when I learned how to <laughs> yes, customize to my MySpace page with HTML. I thought the whole world unlocked for me. <laughs> You're and like now I don't in even remember now. a <laughs> lick of it. <laughs> You're like, I'm this in, is... and suddenly the Matrix stuff oh, flying yeah. at you. As we yeah. all know, the inside of a computer is a city, and that's what we mm-hmm. learned from the movie Hackers. <laughs> yes. um, and uh, Jurassic Park, when they go into the computer, and yes. it's Linux. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, uh, the lights go out, all of the robots have rebelled. Um and it forces humanity back into a stone age. Yes, um, they fully become <laughs> cave people. Um, just because the lights have been out for like minutes. <laughs> and they t- Fry tries to open a, a can of soup with one of those can openers that's on a Swiss army knife. And he gets frustrated and gives up immediately because it is impossible. I don't know if you've ever tried I, to use one of those. I was in the Boy Scouts for know. years and I have no idea. I think it's easier to start a fire than to open a can with one of those things. <laughs> Most soup is pop tops These now. Days, yeah. So I mean, I, where were where was the status of soup cans <laughs> <laughs> when this was created? Because mm. I think only Progresso was the the only soup mm. doing. I ate a lot of canned soup and as, like, a, as a teenager. <laughs> the Campbell's condensed soups. I think those are still manual open. You can get those in Pop Top now too. I oh. know because I use um, tomato soup when I'm making the glaze for my meatloaf. Mm. <laughs> I use mushroom soup when I'm doing my stroganoff. Oh my god, this is the grossest thing I've ever heard. What? That? Meatloaf Depression and stroganoff. Era cooking. These are things you eat on purpose. <laughs> you are a wealthy woman. Listen, I make woman. amazing meatloaf. <laughs> I make amazing gourmet meatloaf. I made it for Michael just uh, last Moments week. Moments ago. He okay. Loved it. I love Michael, but we cannot trust a British person's mm. taste as far as what food is good or not. He grew up in a uh, in an island with one spice, and that's salt, and they don't <laughs> use it very often. He's You're got ruining you Mothering Day. Stop, <laughs> stop talking bad about an entire country of backwards weirdos. <laughs> what I uh, what I appreciate is it, as soon as uh, civilization, you know, backtracks, as soon as the robots rebel, everyone becomes an idiot um, at Planet Express. Even <laughs> even Leela, none of them know how to do anything, and so. <laughs> They have to protect the fire. Yeah, the professor (laughs) invents uh, the whatever spear. (laughs) Yes, a a rock with a a pointed rock on the end of the stick. And when he goes to use it, the the arrowhead immediately falls off. Yes. (laughs) Um, Soon, mom's sons... What are all their names? Igner? Igner Abner? (laughs) No. (laughs) Igner... Oh gosh, I knew their names at one point. All right, I'll pull Whatever. it up. Igner. Talk Blake, amongst yourself while I figure it out. William. I mean, it should be an Igner Abner or 
or Bach situation, right? Bach. <laughs> Walt, Larry, and Igner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Walt, Larry, and Igner. So they show up because they're not enjoying the apocalypse <laughs> as much as mom might be. Well, there's a great scene where they sort of learn about mom's motivations. They're talking to mom, and she know, th- they know yeah, that she's upset. That. They know that she's yeah. upset we did not about talk that about it. If we did, there's Briefly. huge important things that we missed. Because for one, she they ask her about her past and she gives a wistful sigh. And that's before what I she... said. That's when we reveal we talked about how her and um the professor used to be lovers, and that's why she has such a vendetta against Mother's well, Day. Well, we missed good on... stuff. Because when she gives her wistful <laughs> sigh, she like slaps Walt in the face so, ever, but just so like, <laughs> ever so lightly. Ever so lightly, because she can't even summon the summon the strength to slap him. In and we have a perfect fashion. mom line here where she says, um, some snot-eating bastards say it made me a bitter woman. Which <laughs> is Jinx in a nutshell. Some snot-eating bastards say it made me a bitter woman. You're not um, bitter, mommy. <laughs> One of them says. So they show up to um, the Planet Express office uh, to enlist the help of the professor and the crew to try to turn mom's mood around and infiltrate her bra so that they can get the <laughs> so that they can get the device that controls all the robots um, to um, end the robot revolution. Well, they ask about um, the professor's past with mom and he says, uh, it's a humiliating story that I hope I never have to tell. <laughs> well, pull well, up a chair, come on, everyone. Pull up a chair. <laughs> and this is a Jinx Monsoon show. <laughs> this is. Oh no! Don't make me tell these humiliating stories. Well, get comfortable. Get your popcorn. <laughs> well, get comfortable. <laughs> is this where we learn the backstory? Did I yeah, conflate you are earlier? Out of order, and you yelled at me for well, it. Well, it's all. I'm sorry. It's all of a piece. It is all of a piece. He's telling the story that mom was so mom. To. Just reveals that she had her heart broken on, yes, and it was Farnsworth, yes, and then he gives us the flashback where we see the cutie McWhiskers. I am so sorry. I watched this episode again just this morning, and I guess I only do well (laughs) if I watch it immediately before recording because (laughs) so many things happen in my day. (laughs) Oh my god, mom wants to weaponize cutie McWhiskers and turn the rainbows that it shoots out of its eyes into. I don't know. Neutron Just beams or something? Neutron beams. Neutron and she wants beams. to make it 50 feet tall. Um, I think 15. Well, however tall, it's too tall for the professor's <laughs> liking. He doesn't like it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, they, that's the, the, the last straw for him for some reason. She's been evil this whole time, but that was it. <laughs> well, he was mad because he he apparently at one point he just wanted to make cute things. Like that was his only thing that he wanted to invent. And he says big things Must have aren't been a phase. cute. I learned that with my <laughs> colossal tinkling Tina or whatever. <laughs> um, I love that when he storms out uh, in a huff, uh, mom lights her cigarette on one of the yeah. <laughs> laser beams coming out of, which begs so the question, was this dangerous. ever yeah. safe? Was this ever yeah, just really. a cute toy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, they're back in the present. Uh, Leela says, hey, the TV's getting away and throws a rock <laughs> at it. And then it just like collapses and turns on and we get some more news. Um, and Morbo says, uh, the children of PS 132 are M- Morbo's vermin of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're on fire this episode. <laughs> and the news lady says, in actual news, the human race was doomed today as the robot uprising continued. Um, and we see that there is indeed a giant QT McWhiskers terrorizing the city along with the other robots. She did it. She really did it. She really did it. Does anyone have a favorite moment of robot uprising? Like funny things that the robots do? We talked about all the appliances earlier, but there's like firemen in the street are being chased by a fire truck that's spraying water at them. The that's travel how... tubes are just shooting people at walls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh a really, uh, the involved one was when the guy is trying to use the ATM 
it yeah. takes his card and says it's mine now loser or something and the guy gets so uh, despondent he turns to the suicide booth to kill himself and then the suicide booth closes on it <laughs> no you know i actually think this is an homage to the stephen king movie maximum overdrive does anyone mm. know about this <laughs> Yes. No. It's yes. It's a um, movie that Stephen King, it's the only movie he's ever directed. It was not based on a pre existing book. And it is about all of the machines in the world rising up and fighting against the humans. And what counts as a machine and what doesn't is very arbitrary. But at the very <laughs> beginning, I believe Stephen King has a cameo in it as a guy who goes to an ATM and he puts his ATM card in there and the ATM just says, fuck you. <laughs> Does <laughs> it, says, it really? It says, I believe it says, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I think that's Someone also... was working through something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's also the movie that has a um, a soda machine killing someone by throwing sodas at them. I believe that <laughs> does God. happen. A lady How is, it is it with made? the slurm machine. Oh, no, you know then? what it is? Is It's a cigarette machine. <laughs> it shoots cigarettes. How you does remember that kill anyone? I, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> studies show. <laughs> you know, it yeah, took it a while. Him very but... slowly <laughs> just by giving him free cigarettes. <laughs> studies show. Uh, but that, uh, I, did, I, did, I did think of that with the, uh, the slurm uh, machine. But yes. apparently my memory's wrong, so never mind. Well, there might have also so much more sense than light boxes of cigarettes. <laughs> Are you sure you're not thinking of Kirby and the Forgotten Land when Kirby sucks up a soda machine and shoots cans of soda at people? Uh, no, I'm not thinking of that. That is adorable, but that's not is the that image a I had. Cute. Game or yeah, it's very cute. It's, it's a new player. Kirby you can game. play it with your little hubby. They acknowledge that I, he can. I like you can be Kirby. Games, you could be but they're Kirby. Too easy. You can mm. be Kirby because you're a pink shapeshifter, and Michael can be Waddle Dee, who is just an adorable little creature with a spear. That sounds like Michael. I've always liked Kirby, except that the games are too easy, but I do like to play as Kirby in Smash Brothers. Well, you can play as it, and it's easy to get through the first time, but to go back through and get all the collectibles, ooh, quite oh, a challenge. that's where it is. What a completionist. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> So the Suns are uh, briefing the Planet Express crew on the plan. Um, they make Igner wear a bra. It seems very unnecessary. They because... really didn't need to do that. I Igner thought they were going to so act through it. so uncomfortable. Igner's having a rough time this episode. <laughs> He's so uncomfortable with his mother's sexuality. And you know what? Mothers are humans, too. And we can't slut shame moms. Mothers got to because. Fuck. <laughs> um yeah when igner gets really like skeeved out later and he just goes <laughs> for like five seconds that was pretty funny <laughs> um, um but they say you have to get to mom's uh cabin and you can get there using this uh precious non-computerized map and it's like an old Lord of the Rings map that says like Cloakwood Forest and this and that. <laughs> but then you realize that it's a very they're literally just going to the Bronx. Map. <laughs> it's actually very disenchantment. Yeah, there's like a sea monster. Um, f- they need a way to travel there. Fry invents the wheel, um, but it's oval shaped. Now and I'm pretty sure I've seen some wheels in the future before. Some of these of robots wheels. have wheels. Like and said, the way they they're all to... acting like yeah. it's a new invention, and then when Leela says, wouldn't it work better if it was round? Like, that <laughs> is implying that the wheel is a new concept to them, you know? Well, like, they... like everyone had to get dumber for any of these jokes <laughs> to work in this part. Like, when um, when the brothers are leaving, and <laughs> and Leela says, Leela, bring fire? No, we won't be needing that. <laughs> no, we're We've got that taken care of. Things. <laughs> <laughs> I do like well, how they're, it... like, completely unaffected by it. And that one... <laughs> I feel like the brothers are descendingly stupid. Like, the main one is pretty yeah. smart, and then the other one's, yeah. like, a little There's dumb. There's only so much intellect. T- mm-hmm. t- and and um, uh, Anyway. Well, also, I know that's a different we, father. That's a different father. I know. Father. We know things about the brothers. We know that things. <laughs> we know things, but Richard, it's do you too know much who, of a spoiler. Major, do you know who the father is? I don't remember is? things about the brothers. Wormstrom no, is the father of the two older brothers. What? I forgot well, that. If, 
it's heavily implied that it's Wernstrom because <sighs> mom, but they're smarter you know, than... at some point is married to Wernstrom oh, after mm. her relationship with Farnsworth. She's got to be before her Igner relationship the with Farnsworth. Well, because they continue to, uh, you know, they have on and off again they affairs. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe maybe Farnsworth was after Wernstrom, but we know that Wernstrom is um, Carol. That's mom's real name. Mm. Um, Carol's what? ex-husband. Oh, my gosh, Nick. Pay attention to the mom's storyline. Um, <laughs> Interesting if true. Um, anyway, <laughs> they get to the cabin. They after Fry has to pull yeah. his terrible wheelbarrow. Barrow, <laughs> it's my invention. I'll, we'll do it my way. Now we just need someone to pull this. <laughs> um, just the most horrible form of transportation. <laughs> They're not even on the same oh, no. side <laughs> of the wheel. They're just completely <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> I think this whole thing is a commentary on how dependent. I mean, it's a Wally situation because mm, Wally. as soon as they don't have technology to help them out, they all become stupid and lazy and incompetent, and it really shows how much technology is living their lives for all of them. Mm. So um, they get to the cabin. Um, they've uh, <laughs> escaped the mob of robots that's chasing them. And uh, they go over the plan. They're in the bushes going over the plan on how to get a, uh, get mom to... Well, we, we I guess we never really said it out loud. The goal here is for the professor to seduce mom. And yes. Just enough to get, get her, bra her bra off so he yeah. can get um, her, her control device. Now, there's a joke here that I really didn't like where... Uh, <laughs> Fry says, "If if you can't like uh, sweet talk her, then here's a six pack of champagne and a funnel. Um, don't oh. like this at all. Even yeah. if you're trying to save the world, please uh, respect consent. <laughs> you know, there's also like we could really pick the joke apart. There's ways to get the remote control without you know actually having sex with her. But if the goal is to have sex with her and your only way to do it is by forcibly intoxicating her, please just do a different plan. Uh, I did so not true. like this joke. It, I it didn't even see it at the time, but it's true. It was weird because they don't normally go this route for jokes. I didn't yeah, really well, like it. It's it's a trope of the time of just like for some reason it was just normalized the idea of like oh if if your date is drunker then everything's uh easier and it's it's uh, you know it's toxic masculinity uh, conditioning um, trying to ease the masculine guilt of taking advantage of people. Um, so yes, Futurama, no kudos for this joke. We don't and like I this think, joke. I mean, you have to deal with it. I think the older you get, and I would know because I'm older than all of you, um, <laughs> the, the, the entertainment you loved, you know, going back to it, everyone, you're going to be enjoying it for large, you know, swaths of time. And then every once in a while, there's like one joke that hits, and you're like, oh, well, that did not go so well. That did not age. Like, or hmm, in guess. the case of 30, in the case of 30 Rock, most of the jokes. Every uh, other joke. Yeah, it's <laughs> unfortunate. Um, they get to the front door. The professor knocks. Everyone else is watching on from the bushes. Um, he sweet talks her for a second, and it seems like it's working, and he sticks his foot in the door. But mom gets angry and starts slamming the door on his foot. And this is a favorite line of mine. Because Zoidberg is, is watching from the bushes. Is this what human mating looks like? Because I like it. <laughs> Why does Zoidberg like it? <laughs> and I've never seen him look happier. Like, he's got a <laughs> smile on his face and he doesn't even have teeth. Like, I don't understand <laughs> how this made him um, so happy. <laughs> I love the line that mom shouts after she tries repeatedly to shut the door and then she just goes, move your freaking hoof, you goat. <laughs> she, she just comes up with the weirdest exclamations. Like they're kind of old timey. They're kind of referencing nothing and like oh. i mean he does kind of feel like a goat the professor what? that's not a inaccurate <laughs> there was there was one she made earlier when she first brought him up and she's like and if i ever see him again i'm gonna shove a squirrel up him or in him yeah that was a weird like, one i'm a squirrel in him I don't... <laughs> why it's it's so uh vague and it ominous. feels like when they come up with her exclamations they just throw darts at a board 
board and mm-hmm. then play Mad Libs or something. I'm gonna blank a uh, blank. <laughs> um, they uh, oh, uh, the professor gives her flowers and she says daffodils 70 years later and you still remember my favorite flower and he says remember what why does my foot hurt <laughs> like he doesn't even remember five seconds ago <laughs> she she relents and she lets him in and they have their little moment of like re, uh, rehashing their past she it's takes sweet. off his glasses we never see the professor I, I didn't realize stuff. this I didn't realize this until this bit happened that we never see she, him without the glasses. We never see him without um, his glasses ever. And then she says, your eyes always were the most beautiful shade of milky white. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be and a the... flattering look. Yeah. But, um... So is that implying that he has cataracts? But then she says yeah. they were always this color. Um it's just, you know, it's just a throwaway, like, okay, so he's got something weird in those eyeballs. And then he says, and your neck folds hang so delicately from <laughs> your, your neck. This is, um, you know, ancient person flirting. I don't like the jokes about, like, their bodies being gross because they're old. You know, I don't like... um they make a lot of jokes about their sex being gross and um, them being gross because they're old. But then I also kind of think, we're, well, you know, like this isn't like realistic. This isn't like the real world, like old people. They're each like 170. Yeah. Like yeah. They're, they're like crazy old because it's the future. That's some crazy old people there. But um. You know, I don't know. I never like jokes that are like, look how gross these people are because of natural human things. Yeah. But, <laughs> but they, I mean, they really, the the detail in the drawings, it's <laughs> those wrinkles and folds are lovingly drawn on. And when they're eventually, when they are in bed together and like Farnsworth is holding her back, there's like this fold of skin that goes over his hand and it's just, they went all in on it. Honestly, when they walk in on the professor and mom in bed together, in spite of everything I know about these characters, I'm like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> there's, it is there's nothing in here, sweet. but yeah. there's nothing in here but a couple of elephant skin rugs. <gasps> Awful. <laughs> I think the only joke that I like about the whole love making um, is when the professor's trying to get her bra off and he's yes. having a real hard time, and then he goes, first class bun done. Okay. Uh, oh no, the <laughs> I've, re- I've reclassed yeah. the first class. <laughs> He's very, very bad at this. The ro- robots have caught up with the humans, and the rest of the crew and mom's children are forced to hide inside of the cabin. And that's how they discover the elephant skin rugs aforementioned. Um, and at this point, I, th- I guess just because mom got laid, she's in a better mood. And, you know, I can relate. She yeah, decides political. to call off the robot rebellion. Oh, I suppose we should call off the robot rebellion, or it will ruin this lovely evening. Everyone, look, help mom find her bra. <laughs> if I had I a dollar say. for every time <laughs> that's been uttered to me in my life, <laughs> or I've uttered it to people. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> um, the bra is dangling from a ceiling fan, which is also a robot. Fry tries <laughs> to get it. He says the line, is anything here not a robot? And the lamp says, I'm not a robot. (laughs) Really funny. (laughs) Bender Uh, busts in with um, the Marxist greeting card. Yeah, does he just Kool-Aid man his way through? I think so. Or does he come down the chimney? The point is he's in now. And mom asks, you there, bending unit, stretch up there and get mom's bra. And then we realize that, you know, her plan has kind of backfired because he she's ordered them all to rebel and now they won't even listen to her without mm-hmm. her device. So, um, you know, uh, this is a moment of duress. But luckily, <laughs> Bender's love of alcohol saves the day because mm-hmm. um, the Marxist greeting card reveals mm-hmm. that alcohol is the... Um, Opiate of the robot masses. Opiate, Opiate of, the, of the bourgeoisie. The pro- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the future robot rebellion, they will have no need for alcohol. And 
the soap bender says, Dos Vidania greeting card. And <laughs> it's really sad when he rips up the greeting card and we hear its little yelps of pain. <laughs> it makes, I've hated the greeting card this whole episode, but then my heart breaks for it when we hear like, oh, oh. <laughs> um, Bender gets the, gets the bra, even though the, the fan fights back. Mm-hmm. And they're all oh the what what does the soda machine say when he busts off death to all humans and yes. then mom pushes the button she looks very <laughs> she's not amused she's <laughs> like she doesn't even care i love that mom can be threatened with death but she's just so confident in herself that she's just like oh shut up and pushes the button <laughs> and then the slurm machine says free soda for all humans <laughs> and then much like kirby in the forgotten lands it spits soda at everyone but not in a violent way no um, amy the the eternal idiot when she needs to be um <laughs> Reveals, good job, Professor. The plan worked. Oh, and Amy. mom has uh, her joke. Amy. And for, for <laughs> some reason, I, I mean, I already said what I said about the, like, the ageism and the body shaming. But I do like mom's line where she says, what? This was all a ploy? I thought this was a passionate moment of hot, dry sex. <laughs> I like the hot, hot dry, dry sex. sex. There's just something about, like, her... She's not ashamed of it. She's just <laughs> stating the fact that they had hot, dry sex. Um, and, and you do get you do get some emotion from that says, line too. You get some real emotion from her when yeah. she's when she's you know learned she's been deceived. That's just good voice acting. Oh, but I skipped over the fact that before this, um, the professor and mom, they're kind of rekindling their love. And he says, um, I want to shout my love for you from the rooftops. <laughs> Perhaps I shall <laughs> engineer some sort of albino, albino screaming shouting gorilla. Ape, <laughs> shouting, or, uh, shouting gorilla, ape. I think. No, I think it's gorilla. I think you're right. <laughs> albino shouting gorilla. <laughs> That's when Amy reveals that it was all a plan. Mom is very hurt. And... Um, um, she throws them all out and she says, get out of my life. I never want to see you again. Thus re- rebuilding the longstanding uh, feud between mom and Professor Farnsworth. It's all, everything's reset by the end of the episode. Yes. Because that's how we like it. Yeah. Yeah. They're back at Planet Express cleaning up and we see that Professor has indeed bred the albino shouting gorillas, and there's six or love seven on the mom. roof. Mom, love mom, love mom. mom. And they mom. have like <laughs> robot helmets, and they seem it's like, like mind control. Yeah, they seem like aware of their like enslavement in a way it's that kind I found of upsetting. agony for them. I can yeah, see they that seem in very the... upset <laughs> or in physical oh. pain or both. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and then in Bender- a very rare occurrence, instead of going to the uh, traditional uh, white text on black credits, we rewatch. It's not even a new clip. We rewatch the greeting card. Say it's a little poem to Bender. Well, the first time it's hmm. Bender reading the poem, and this time it's um, the greeting card, which uh, I believe is voiced right. by Laura, uh, Lauren Tom reading um, itself. Reading itself, yeah. It was different, okay. I love my mommy. <laughs> okay, we will have to get that sound clip. I love yeah. my mommy. Get I don't know when somewhere. I'll ever use it because I'm on a show with Jinx, but, you know. You know what? I am sick of your insubordination, your don't start insolence. With, don't, hey. Your don't, insulin. Don't be petty. <laughs> don't be petty. I was just stating a fact. Can we go into don't the question? Don't be jealous of my boogie. <laughs> Can we go into um, the Major, we have compulsory Wait, questions. Did, we are ask. you gonna hit the? I have to hit the oh button. Oh my god! What do you? Hey, do you hey! Talk? Let me ask you something. Just respect the button. That's all I ask. Major, these are our compulsory questions we ask every guest. Woo! Feel f- feel free to answer them however rings true for you. I'm all ears. Oh, I was just waiting to see if this little. Not that bastard. just raises further questions. Who's <laughs> gonna push another goddamn button? Major of all the characters in the Futurama Futureverse, who do you most relate to? Who do I most relate to? Uh, you know, I 
Oh gosh, why are the names leaving me now? Uh, <laughs> I, I I think you could describe the character. <laughs> well, no, because that's just going to make me sound like an idiot if I have to <laughs> describe whoever it is. Um, I like. I think I don't relate to, but I most enjoy Zap Brannigan for a lot of reasons. Mm. Um, I think knowing that he might have had a Phil Hartman um, connection, I always see that in mm. him, and I think that that always, again, a connection to The Simpsons that it's like, oh, that brings me back. Um, <laughs> but also, uh, I think personally, I most relate to Kiff. You're a, um, you're a Kiff. It, I see yeah, it. in a lot of in a lot of my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Would that make me the Zap? I yeah. didn't say anything. Oy oy oy. This major, is your existence as a non-binary person, Jinx. You're both mom and Zap. <laughs> I do see the you two genders, mom and Zap, as a Kiff with a professor <laughs> rising. Mm, you know, you've okay, got yes. elements mm, of the professor. professor. But if I, I've also never know, like, seen Major without his glasses on. Whoa, never there's seen. There's no it. eyes there. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's milky all, white. It's it's just. <laughs> yeah, don't take them off, or you'll you'll blind everyone <laughs> it's who's just watching the video. Blinding <laughs> light. <laughs> um, Major of all the Futurama characters, who would you do? Here's another funny thing. I would never have sex with myself if given the option, but Kiff is kind of cute and. I'm interested. I'm supported by a series of bladders, gas filled <laughs> bladders. Fluid filled bladders. Fluid filled you always bladders. say gas. I don't the know. only reason I wouldn't <laughs> explore with Kiff is knowing the whole mating process and the uh, pregnancy things. It's just too oh, much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but that's only if he really falls in love with you. Do that's you think true. this could just be like a one night stand? It could be a hookup, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. He's I could see had that for hookups. Me. Kiff gets Has around. He? Yeah. He's had Snoo Snoo. He's had Snoo um. Snoo. <laughs> well, I guess we never actually see him have Snoo Snoo because we had we oh, hear he has Snoo Yeah, he's Snoo the only Snoo one Rye. without a he's the only one not in a crotch cast at the end. So maybe <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, and he climbs around on the ceiling. So we haven't gotten that episode yet, have we? Have no. we? No. No. Oh my gosh. It's so people hard are gonna to fight keep... over that episode. Everyone loves that episode. Mm. It, it's hard to keep it it in like keep track of what we've seen and what I've just watched multiple times in my life. Times. Time is a flat circle. Major, your final question hmm. is will you now be watching more Futurama and do you plan to watch uh, the new season? Oh gosh, I'm so uh, I feel so trepidatious about this new season. Um I will watch it. I will watch that new season. I will give it at least an episode. Um, you know, I made it through most of the way with Disenchantment. I think I did finish Disenchantment, but I was disenchanted by the Honestly, end of it. Honestly, hard to tell if you finished it from yeah. the way that it ended. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but of course, I'm going to give it a chance because I want it to be good. And, you know, I, it's just the eternal optimist in me, right? Well, have you ever been, um, have you ever had a, a show that you do enjoy that took a long hiatus and it came back and you liked it just as much when it came back? I can answer this. It's um, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is one of Major's favorite shows. And I feel like it takes, it's taken multiple hiatuses. Every time it comes <laughs> back, it's still good. Yep. Uh, hit the nail on the head. It does not get, uh, it, it, the quality does not change. The Even when it was that lady. Excellent. You remember when the lady was chasing them? <laughs> yes, the lady. You mean Pearl Forrester? Pearl. <laughs> yes, I think I do. <laughs> and and Pat and Oswald. Pat and Oswald's in the new one, and uh, with their latest season, they have a lady um, riffing the movie. <gasps> they have and a female voicing Crow, um, which is oh, new wow. and great. Yeah. Is it still Baron Vaughn as Tom Servo though? Yeah. Uh, oh, thank well, goodness. they they have two casts. They have the touring oh. cast, which is doing some of the shows, and then they have Baron Vaughn and um. And you know, Major's one. been to the live show. Oh, you know he has. I made Baron Vaughn laugh at a comedy festival one time, and uh, it's a real feather in my cap as far as my comedy career goes. Do you want to know exactly how cap. it happened? Put it in your cap. <laughs> it's a real feathered hair in, on your head. <laughs> That's how your hair looks to me right now. Very feathered, feathered, very yeah. very large. Slayer. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. What? How did you make him laugh, Nick? Yeah, might as well tell us. 
Um, I can't remember. He was trying to make oh. a punchline that, and he was like, "Oh, it's like a a Freudian joint." I don't know how we got there, and I punched it up in the moment, and I said, "A Freudian spliff." And he looked at me and he said, "I respect you now." I'm not joking. That's what he said. <laughs> I respect you now. Sometimes you know it was funny when they can't, when they don't laugh. And he didn't they just laugh. Say, he just had a shocked face. Funny. And he said, yeah. I respect you now. <laughs> because he took one look at you when you walked in and he was like, there ain't mm. well, no then, way this person's going to change my feelings about nope. this person. Then later <laughs> that same day, he was on a comedy show where the comedians had to do a, a dance at the end. And he was a great dancer. He came in second place. But I did a bit with my friend Arlo Warehouser, who was hosting it, and I came out and danced with MK Paulson, future guest of the show, mm -hmm. and we all got to dance together. So I have a lot How of fair and fond memories. My dancing was fine. The bit was that we came out in sunglasses, so it didn't matter if we danced well or not. The bit was that we were <laughs> dancing out of nowhere. <laughs> I thought you were going to say um... he stole your spliff joke. At yeah, he stole my spliff joke. The he said, I after. invented this. <laughs> I don't respect anyone. <laughs> I don't run with comedians as much, but um, I I did do Clusterfest one year and met a lot of comedians in the green room, and that was worth the entire experience. Um, that was when I first met Kate Berlant and Bowen Yang and Matt Rogers. And Ben Schwartz walked mm. past... And I was too nervous that I was going to make a fool of myself, so I never went and said hi. But then I tweeted that I regretted not saying hi, and he responded to the tweet saying, Not even a hi, Jinx! <laughs> well, you couldn't the have caught Sonic. up with him anyway, because he's so fast. Yeah, he's, no kidding. Because he's Sonic both had the same idea. Great. <laughs> ben Schwartz is Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought that was... Um, Jaleel White. Jaleel White. Chris <laughs> Marsden. <laughs> Major and I are on the same page here. <laughs> I thought it was Chris Marsden. No, James Marsden. James, He's the human. I always call him Chris because Who of the Thirty fuck Rock. Is Chris? I thought it was James Hemsworth. Oh, Chris Cross. His yeah. Chris is his name. Yes. Oh gosh. C R I S S. <laughs> Darren Chris. What? Well. Major, thank you so much for being our guest today, and um, <laughs> listeners. Listeners, next week is a finale episode of season two, and I'm going to have to think of, as the producer, I'm going to have to think of something really special for the final episode of season oh. two, because Lord knows I'm not going to get any help from this I have no strong feelings one way or the other. interrupting me with his goddamn what? soundboard I, that he's I, so goddamn my proud finger, of. My finger was slipping. There was This is why you're not the producer jelly. anymore. You know Petroleum what? Petroleum jelly. It got all over my screen. Mom. All right. All right. All right. You, you, you two, you two, can I just uh, intervene here for a moment? I guess. Uh, you, you've been fighting a lot. I've been feeling this tension, I'm, oh, this whole producer thing about who's producer or not. And I really just think, I think you both need to, you know, take a breath, take stock of your relationship, what's important to you, and just really like... Get rid of this toxicity that you've got going. So cut her out of the podcast. Is that what you're saying? It. Cut out the toxicity. But this is how this is how it's always been. Yeah. No. I. I just. I just think it's kind of building to too much of a head. And I. I also. I also think this whole um, producer gag that you've been playing with. I think you both think it's a little funnier than it is, and I, I think maybe it's just uh, it's time to let it go. Yeah. It's just I, time to I let it, it go. I, I, I thought it was hilarious. It's good. We, no, it's not, we just that's always not what had the, something to refer back to. We've committed so much yeah. time to it. It's it's not what we've the fans so many... It's not Nicole what the fans Meyer are saying. Beat me up. No. Did you hear that one? I, I, if, I, if, yeah. I heard. If we don't fight over who's the producer, then who's going to be the producer? I guess Camille could do it. She has been the producer this entire time. I guess that is true. Neither of us have actually ever been a producer on this show. Wow. Really makes I think we've think. had a really big breakthrough today. Well. <sighs> Mom. Oh my God, Laura and Tom just agreed that she's gonna be on next week's episode. We're gonna have an actual voice. <laughs> We're gonna have an actual voice actor from Futurama on the finale episode of season two of I'm 40% Podcast. Wait, is this a bit? <laughs> 
No, this is real. But everything so we listeners... do at the end of the episode is always a bit. <laughs> We're we're killing that off. This is is the, 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 a new era. If that awkward improv conversation didn't <laughs> didn't tip everyone off, listeners, if you're still listening, it's true. Lauren Tom will be our finale guest next episode. So join us back here next Monday for a brand new episode of I'm Forty Percent Podcast. Until then. <laughs> Until then, have a futuristic day. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.